Hello, my name is Irene Zhang, and today I'm going to talk about DemiKernel, a new data path operating system for microsecond scale data center systems. This work was done in collaboration with many colleagues at MSR and elsewhere. Today's data center networks, storage devices, and in-memory applications all operate at single digit microsecond latencies, and they're only getting faster. Unfortunately, existing operating systems do not operate at those speeds. As a result, the traditional OS kernel imposes an unaffordable overhead in today's data center. Recent kernel bypass devices and systems remove the OS kernel from the data path, then offload the needed OS protection features to the IO device that let applications safely perform IO directly from user space. Unfortunately, they do not replace the OS kernel's other features, like providing higher level abstractions like sockets and files. Recent work has aimed to replace some of that OS management with user level TCP stacks, schedulers, and storage systems, but none have offered a general purpose portable data path OS. So why is this so hard? Well, kernel bypass was never designed to be general purpose. It's always been used by specialized applications, so even the devices don't agree on what OS features to implement. For example, all kernel bypass devices and libraries implement user level IO and address translation and the other OS protection features that are required to let applications access the device. But more capable devices do more. For example, RDMA implements a custom network protocol with reliable ordered messaging and congestion control. While DPDK devices implement memory management, but require the application to provide a networking stack and software. Then with new programmable devices, the possibilities are endless. We might offload an entire TCP stack or something even more complicated like protobuf serialization and deserialization. Unfortunately, today's applications see all of these differences. So portability is really, really hard. Since there isn't agreement as to what OS features should even be available on the data path, it's very difficult to propose a general purpose OS kernel replacement. So this is the big question that we're trying to answer. What should a data path OS look like? What API should it have? What features and what architecture? DemiKernel is our attempt at an answer. We had three high level goals with DemiKernel. First, come up with a data path architecture that accommodates different kernel bypass devices. Then we knew we needed a high level, easy to use and portable data path API so that applications can run across these devices without code changes. Finally, microsecond scale applications have different requirements from traditional applications. So we knew that we needed some new OS features that met those requirements. For example, zero copy IO is really important for microsecond latencies, but coordinating access to memory across the application and kernel bypass device is complex. So we knew that Demi kernel needed to offer some kind of zero copy memory coordination. Demi kernel proposes a library OS data path architecture where each libOS supports one kernel bypass platform or device. The libOSs implement the same API and OS services, but either in hardware or software. So for example, the RDMA libOS implements memory and IO buffer management in software, but leaves reliable ordered networking to the hardware. While at the same time, the DPDK libOS implements those features in software. DemiKernel implements a new portable data path API named PDPix. 
PDPix aims to minimize changes to POSIX while fixing well-known issues that would cause performance problems for microsecond scale applications. For example, instead of a pipe-based socket interface, PDPix uses a queue that takes scatter gather arrays. This eliminates the latency overhead from waiting for the app to potentially want to share more data before sending the I.O. The queue interface is inherently asynchronous and returns a queue token for each I.O. operation, letting the data path OS directly assign I.O. completions to application workers. Demikernel also lets applications perform zero copy I.O. from their own memory, so applications can use pointers in queue operations. To simplify the coordination around this zero copy I.O., Demikernel offers use after free protection to make sure that applications don't accidentally free memory that the data path OS might be using for I.O. See the paper for more details on this interface. Demikernel libOSs provide this API across heterogeneous devices. They really can be designed in any way as long as they provide the PDPix API and the same OS features. However, we've used some general design principles for building Demikernel libOSs. First, we found that Demikernel absolutely needs data path IO stacks that are extremely fast. We have to be able to take in and process a network packet or storage completion in thousands of cycles. We also need an abstraction for multiplexing and scheduling thousands of CPU cycles at a time. Existing scheduling abstractions are far too heavy weight for this. So we use coroutines because libOS has spend most of their time processing IO. We found that the coroutines let us turn this kind of asynchronous event-based processing into a more natural linear flow. Finally, we use an integrated memory allocator for memory management. This is a trade-off. It's an easy and efficient place to put the features that we needed, like use after free protection, but it also requires every application to use the demi-kernel memory allocator. So please see the paper for a lot more details about the design of demi-kernel libOSs. We built five libOSs that support kernel bypass devices across Linux and Windows. Most of the kernel bypass libOSs on Linux are built in Rust, which has memory safety and lightweight coroutine support, which we liked. And you can see the paper for more details on our use of Rust to build IO stacks. These libOSs support three device types. And then there's one libOS, CatNap, that uses the POSIX interface on the traditional OS kernel for debugging and environments where you don't have access to a kernel bypass device. Three of the libOSs run in virtual machines on Azure, as well as in bare metal. To give you an idea of their performance, I'll show the latency for all of the libOSs running on our cluster at MSR. First, DemiKernel reduces latency by 5x compared to the kernel-based data path. The next thing to note from these experiments is that it offers competitive latencies compared to recent work. For example, it's within a microsecond of ERPC and Shenango and Caladan. Finally, Demikernel does not add more than a few microseconds of overhead compared to accessing the bare kernel bypass devices. Showing that Demikernel can implement a general purpose data path OS with low overhead. Please see the paper for a lot more results and experiments. To wrap up, Demikernel is the first data path OS for microsecond scale applications. It lets applications run portably across different kernel bypass devices without code changes. Finally, we considered it our first attempt at a data path OS design, but there's still a lot of open research questions in how to design data path OSs that are out there to be solved. Our code is available online and currently being worked on and developed. So if you're interested in talking to us or contributing, please contact us through GitHub. Thanks.